I don't really know what to say today, except I really want to thank the Discovery team for, for doing just an amazing job with this flight and this vehicle. Um, I, when I think of the Discovery team, I think not only of the folks that did all the processing that, that made this last flight just as perfect as it could be, but, but all the folks that throughout the history of the vehicle have participated and, and made this vehicle what it is. When I think back to the Downey and Palmdale guys and the, the folks we've worked, out, worked with throughout the years, they're all part of the big Discovery team that, that pulled all this off and, did, and gave us just a phenomenal flight, a phenomenal way to, to see the, uh, the end of the Discovery vehicle. But uh, again, I think its legacy will be the future. If you take a look at what this crew did, the extra two days on orbit, they really got Space Station in a great configuration. They did a ton of extra work on board Space Station, and that was really only possible because the vehicle did such a great job uh, on orbit. There was really no anomalies on the vehicle. It, it came down to the ground exactly the same way, it looked extremely clean underneath. But, but that extra work and to get Station really prepared is really going to set us well up for this next research period because there would have been a lot of work being left for the Station crew to to go work through with the, the uh, HTV arriving and the ATV arriving and then also Discovery leaving the PMM. So they just did a phenomenal job. Um, you know, we, we're going to see here in a couple days, we roll back out to the pad and we've got two more flights. We need to keep the focus on those flights and, and stay diligent and keep working those flights uh, just as hard as we did this flight. Um, space flight doesn't come easy as we all know. I think last week we, we got a chance to see that with the Taurus XO and the Glory mission that things that are even fairly simple to us and we think we fully understood, we obviously didn't understand, and we lost a Glory spacecraft last week. So that reemphasizes to me, we follow the same processes, the systems are different, but the same processes, the same thought process is used in all our shuttle flights as well. So we just need to stay focused, keep our head down, recognize that this is not easy, uh, keep the teams moving forward, and I can tell you I'm sure that the folks here at Kennedy that work on the vehicles know that, and they will do a great job of getting these vehicles ready to go fly, and, and we'll close out the shuttle program the way it deserves to be closed out on an extremely high note. But again, I can't thank the Discovery team enough for what they've done. They just did a phenomenal job today. The, the vehicle was just awesome. So, Mike? Thanks, Bill. Yeah, I'll, I'll echo that and say that it was really a, a triumph today for the, the whole entire Discovery team. Um, the vehicle was in fantastic shape. It flew the whole mission uh, in, in really great condition. The, the thermal protection system looks fantastic. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it was, it was beautiful. We, we talked a little bit uh, about the weather. You know, the winds were, were blowing uh, uh, crosswind for a little bit, and they turned around as expected and pretty much headed straight down the runway. I think we ended up with like a one-knot crosswind at, at actual touchdown. Uh, a nice little stiff headwind, but uh, nothing outside of limits at all. And it, uh, it made for a little a nice uh, cooling breeze out there on the runway after the crew got out. Um, but again, no, no issues at all. Uh, we got to see uh, the, the, on the thermal protection system, one of the things that was, was interesting to see is the little protuberance tile that we fly, a little bump that we put out on the edge of the wing to intentionally trip the boundary layer uh, and, and learn about this hypersonic high-speed reentry uh, zone that really the shuttle is one of the few vehicles that flies in a way that we can truly gather data on it. So in addition to all the great science and research going on in station, the vehicle itself is a science platform. And, and even here at the end of the program, we're still progressing. This was the first flight of the uh, of half-inch protuberance. Uh, the teams uh, got really good data. We think the thermocouple data will be great. And then we also have a team of folks both on the ground and in the air doing what we call our high therm imagery. Um, the Cast Glance P3 aircraft was down near Guatemala, Honduras, uh, and captured Mach 18 photos. And they believe they can see the cone uh, where the, this, this boundary layer was asymmetric and tripped early at Mach 18. And then we had ground-based units over near St. Petersburg in Florida, and they captured lower speed data around Mach 6. And again, really good imagery. Uh, and that's going to really advance our knowledge of, of high-speed uh, entry aerodynamics. Um, we're going to continue that with Endeavor. It's also flying a half-inch protuberance, although we were joking that this data looked good. Maybe we'll go and run out there and make it even bigger. But, uh, <laughs> but no, I don't think we're going to do that, but we'll talk about it. Um, but anyway, it, it shows some of the great stuff that we can do with the, uh, with the shuttle. Um, the, uh, the thing that leaves me, um, the legacy discoveries leaving behind is, is the pictures from Fly Around. And you look at the size of the space station and, and you look at uh, the pictures from when the crew was inside and you look at the volume and the amount of hardware that was carried into space by the, uh, by the shuttle and, and the international partners and our, and our Russian colleagues. But, but if you think about that, all that hardware, um, most of it uh, on the U.S. segment came through Florida, was processed and carried up on a shuttle uh, and put together and assembled. 
uh, and it, without uh, very many exceptions, worked perfectly and it got assembled. There were no big instances where we ran an umbilical cable and came up three feet short. Um, all that worked perfect, and, uh, and, and it was, it's a true testament not only to the, the shuttle teams here in Florida, uh, but the station teams building their hardware, the, the agency as a whole, uh, and the country that's behind us in, uh, in manned spaceflight. So I'll end with just a fantastic mission, uh, a really fantastic vehicle, and, and a, a great way for Discovery to, uh, to end its career. Okay. Well, see, I don't have a lot to add. Uh, uh, the vehicle looks really good, as we, as we typically have been saying in the last several missions. Very few uh, dings on the tile. Uh, the thing I'm going to take away from today w was the attitude of the, of the ground processing team uh, with the vehicle out there. Uh, as soon as wheels stopped and the convoy made its way up to the vehicle and, and then the ground crews made their way up to do the, the initial safing, the purge and the cooling unit attachment and the assessment of the vehicle, they did that today like they did it uh, the last mission of Discovery, 10 missions of Discovery ago, 20 missions of Discovery ago. They did not skip a beat today. It, it's a true testament to the people who work on this ship and that love what they do. Um, again, they treated this one as, as if we're going to fly an, another dozen times with Discovery. So it was just really, really heart, heartwarming to me to see that, and that amount of care and, and professionalism with the ground team today. Uh, listening to the loops during, during entry was, was always fun, um, but I'm gonna, my takeaway is going to be the ground crew and how they hit that machine today with all the, the vigor and, and uh, dedication that they've had for, for many, many years. So we'll get her back in the, in the OPF in another couple hours or so and, and begin the, uh, the real safing of the vehicle in the OPF and, and then we'll get into the transition to retirement uh, uh, phase of, of her life. Meanwhile, Endeavor, uh, we were going to try to take Endeavor out tonight. Uh, we talked long and hard this morning about the weather forecast for tonight and, and uh, had, we, had we made an attempt, likely we would have violated our, light, our lightning criteria. It's no, no more than 10% uh, within 20 nautical miles during the entire rollout. And uh, Kathy Winters, launch weather officer, gave us a forecast that would have violated that. So rather than, uh, rather than mess around with that during the day today and have crews come in and wonder if we were going to roll out, uh, we, we decided early this morning to go ahead and knock that off. And, and uh, we'll come in tomorrow morning, take another look at the weather for tomorrow night's roll. It would be the same time, a 4 o'clock call to stations and a, and a 18 and a 20 hundred, 8, 8 o'clock p.m. local time first motion. We'll take a look at that tomorrow morning and assess whether we think we have a shot at that or whether we may have to uh, slide another day. We'll cross that bridge tomorrow morning. But we'll get Endeavor out to the pad and get on with her pad processing for her final flight too. So uh, uh, a good day. Discovery's home safe. The astronauts are down. I was looking in their eyes as they were looking back at the ship, and uh, they had some special feelings, I'm sure, as well. So you'll get a chance to talk to them later. Good day here, and uh, Discovery's home safe.